Hello, I'm Eloisa. The fifth session is about interpersonal relationships and, fa and family dynamics, which is looking at parents' relationships with a partner. Specifically, I'm talking about a romantic relationship, but also your relationship with other adults is, can also be included in this. In my experience, relationships are the greatest source of pa um, happiness or they can be the greatest source of pain and suffering. I feel like God created relationships in order for us to learn a lot about love. I look at the earth and there's billions of people on the earth and we also get very attracted to relationships, like how many movies are there about relationships, which I think is a reflection of society wanting certain relationships. A lot of those are addictive relationships, so I'm not saying they're gonna bring great happiness, but um, there's so much emphasis on relationships. And in my experience and my observation of others, what I notice is in when re a relationship is not in harmony with love and when there's disharmony in a relationship of any kind, unhappiness or um, bad treatment, it actually consumes the person and it's very hard to feel or think or focus on anything else except what's happening in your relationship. So when a relationship is going smoothly or it's good, you, like you have a lot of joy, you want to see them and hang out and share information with them. And if you've ever been in a playground when kids meet each other and they have friends, like it's just so adorable. Like they run up to each other and they're like, hi, like I've, when they're free to be expressive and actually express how they feel. I've seen so many lovely little interactions and I feel that that childlike quality of just openness and desire and interest in their friend and wanting to share themselves with their friend is such a beautiful, beautiful thing about relationships. Now that's, we're talking, that's a friendship, but the same happens with romantic partner relationships. For the purpose of this presentation, uh, there is what I would say is a hierarchy of relationships. And this is something you can reflect in your own life immediately about okay, where, what, what are the important relationships in my life and where are these? And we'll discuss, I want to discuss this and what actually brings the most happiness when you have your um, hierarchy of relationships. So for the greatest amount of happiness in your life, if you have a relationship with God, it's gonna bring you a lot of joy and happiness, then love of people, and that includes you and your soulmate, and then Others, including children, all equal. That's an equal, equal. Obviously, with your soulmate, uh, or you're going to want to probably spend more time with them because that's your own soul, but you would still treat yourselves and others equally. And then love of the natural environment. Now, you can look at this and you can actually reflect in your own life, where's your priorities at? Do you even have a relationship with God? If you've got no relationship with God, well, that's off the list. Do you have a relationship with others? Do you hang out more with your friends than your partner? Do you just want to have a relationship with a partner so you can have sex or so they can look after kids? Or because you've just been together for so long and so now you're just really in a friendship? Or maybe you just cohabit with a person and you don't even talk to them anymore. Like where are your relationships at? Do you spend most of your time with your work colleagues? Do you even develop relationships with your work colleagues? Or do you go to, to work, you don't even really talk with anyone? You come home, you might not even be in a relationship. You know, how's your relationship with yourself going? Or do you just have a, a relationship with the natural environment and you love being out in nature and you really don't like people? Or you love hanging out with animals, but you really don't like people? All of that's going to affect your happiness. And if you can get your priority system of relationships right, so your love of God and relationship with God, and then next would be yourself and your soulmate, next would be your, um, your love of others, and that includes children and then the love of the environment. And when I say that, that's where your time will be spent. That's where your priorities will spend. But if you don't have a relationship with God, then you can't really have a love of the environment. And if you don't have a relationship with God, you're not genuinely going to love people because you're not going to really understand what that means or how God feels about that. And so you're going to be doing all kinds of things. And some of them might be in harmony with the way that God views love. And some of them might be in disharmony with that. So having a relationship with God is very important and will bring you a lot of joy and happiness if you develop that relationship. So from what I've been saying, relationships are very important. There's some key things to remember about relationships. Relationships and interactions with people are always emotional 
even if you don't think you're an emotional person, you are still having an emotional soul-based interaction with every single person who, you, who, you, who you're with. In fact, your soul is having an effect on the entire world and the entire, and entire humanity. So if you think that you don't have any effect in the world, it's not true. Maybe you're toning yourself down a lot and you're very shut down. And sure, your impact on the world will probably be a bit less. But that depends because you can have a very negative impact on the world, such as if you're in your addictions very heavily, then you can severely negatively impact the world. Um, even just say, let's look at what you might call class as just a simple everyday thing like having a coffee every day. That has a massive worldwide impact that uh, affects people who have to harvest and grow those, those, um, the beans for your coffee. People who roast them, they get treated very badly, very poorly, often in very bad conditions. The cups that are used use a lot of plastic, a lot of natural resources. You are taking a stimulant, which is actually going to sh cause you to disconnect from yourself. So um, that's not going to be very good for you. You're then desensitizing from your emotions, which means that you're going to be less connected. So one simple thing, and look, there's far, 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 far more in that um, <laughs> than I'm going into right now. But what I want to illustrate is that just a simple thing that you feel like, oh, that's just something that I need to have every day is actually an addiction and has an on-flow effect on all of humanity, actually. There are a lot of issues with, with our what we just class as some simple addiction or is not a really a big deal. And it's starting to self-reflect, which you can do immediately in your life about your addictions and how they are actually harming your relationships with others. As we are speaking about family dynamics and parenting, we need to look at how does your interpersonal relationships, specifically your partner relationship, actually play out in family dynamics. Now, if you were in a perfected state, so if you're at one with God and you're at one with God's love and you were always loving and truthful and living in harmony with God's way, then your, your relationship would have a positive impact on everyone in your environment and on the natural environment and yourself as well. At the moment in the world, that's not how most relationships are. Most relationships are based heavily on addiction, codependence, barter, um, pretty much anything except love, to be honest. Most relationships are not truthful and uh, not, not loving. There's a few who are seeking to be more truthful and loving, but often that is to an extent until someone is feels uncomfortable or until they get to a point and then they don't want to feel an emotion. And, it's, and when I say comfortable, that's what I'm meaning. You get to a point and you're like, no, I don't want to feel anything about this issue. So that's the end of the conversation. I feel privileged to know some people who have very honest, truthful interactions with others. And I notice the connection that actually happens in their relationship, closer and more connected because of the truth in their relationship. So there's certain qualities that actually support relationships and create more loving conditions in a relationship. And there are certain things that actually destroy relationships. In regards to love in a relationship, God is, God's laws are actually trying to destroy anything that is out of harmony with love. That is anything. So you can look in the natural environment. God's got cleanup teams. So you've got ants, insects, um, fungus, plants, everything that actually decomposes matter and breaks it down. Well, there's laws that work the same way in love. So anything out of harmony with love, so our addictions, if you like, God's laws are working on those and trying to break those down in order that we can get rid of those. And so in a relationship, anything that's out of harmony with love, God's laws trying to expose, trying to make transparent, wanting both parties to see, wanting both parties to feel through and feel their emotions about in order that they can break those down, and then they can actually start, once everything's out of harmony with love is broken down, you can actually start to build loving relationships. And then you have a very strong foundation to work from. In this presentation, we'll look at partner, partner relationships, how they affect children and dynamics in a family, what, if you're in a relationship, what you might, um, things to look at, if you're not in a relationship, things you can look at, I'll talk about how children respond to their environment and the relationships in it. That because we are, because humans have a soul, that is the strongest force within a family dynamic. So physical things are not as important as the soul-based interactions that are happening in a family. 
We'll look at substitution in relationships. And we'll also look at some things about how to develop loving relationships and to make love-based change in your relationship so that you can break down anything that's unloving in order that you can actually start to grow a loving dynamic. If you're in a partner relationship, something to remember is that if you're just new to that relationship, it's not your partner's fault that things are happening. There's an attraction, the law of attraction has brought you together in order that you can learn more about love. That's how I view relationships. Any relationship has you come in and you have all of your emotions and they have all their emotions, they have all their experiences. When you have a relationship with somebody, all your feelings, your thoughts, um, and if it's a new relationship, they're all yours, they all came with you, you had them before you met this person. The attraction might expose different things in you that you weren't necessarily aware about. And this is a lovely way to learn about yourself and how you feel and what your beliefs are. And the more diversity of people you meet, then the more things get exposed in you. And the more you can actually come to understand yourself and see where you're out of harmony with love. And that means that then you've got the opportunity, if you can see where you're out of harmony with love, to actually make changes to bring your life into harmony with love. That's the beauty of relationships. So we're talking about partner relationships. So if you've just entered a relationship, just remember that when you know you feel upset about something in your relationship, it's not about your partner. They might have just exposed something in you and they might have treated you even unloving, but the feeling you have is yours and it was already in you and it was already created before you met them. And that's something that I think is worth remembering. So when I first met my um, ex-husband and any person that I've been in a relationship, I came with a whole lot of injured feelings and my own beliefs and my own thoughts and my own desires and what I thought was right and wrong and all kinds of things. And he came in with all of his and we met and then some things we thought were really great about each other and some things we didn't think were really great about each other. And it was a matter of taking some personal responsibility and going, wow, okay, you know, when my partner does this, I feel this way. And if you're humble, you'll go off and you'll feel your feelings about that. And what you'll find is that it's really nothing to do with your partner. They just exposed a feeling in you and it was a perfect attraction in order for you to feel something and work through an issue that is out of harmony with love in yourself. And if you do that and you humbly work through it and you really, really work through it, so you work through the cause of what created it and you release it, then there's an opportunity for change in your relationship. And it's quite interesting in relationships. There's a beautiful opportunity for so much rapid change to happen because you've, uh, particularly a romantic relationship, because you'll be sexually involved and you'll be physically involved with each other and there's a whole lot of emotions. And so, and also there's a whole lot of opportunity for spiritual growth as well, because you can learn a lot about love by the dynamics and the things that are exposed in a relationship with somebody. So just remember that you come into a relationship already with your own, I, I kind of feel like, like a backpack of, a, of gear, if you like, emotional issues that you already bring into the relationship. And to be humble to the fact that if you feel irritated or upset or angry or hurt, which is a form of anger. It's actually hurt as an anger. If there's some anger in that, um, whatever you feel, they were, those feelings were already in you, and they're just being exposed by the relationship. A key thing to remember is to seek for God's truth about a matter in your relationship. So, so often, so often, I just see between genders. I see between, well, same genders, just between partners. Um, you know, you're basically fighting, like just having a massive war or a power struggle and a power dynamic to gain power over each other. That's not a relationship. And you're always going to feel bad after that. Even if you feel good for a minute, someone's going to feel bad. And when we're loving, that's good for everybody and nobody feels bad. So, they, and when I say that, when you're going through certain um, emotions, depending on what your injuries are, uh, sometimes what's loving say if you have superior feelings and you just feel like you're completely right all the time well when you're actually being loved you might actually feel like oh people aren't being nice to me anymore and actually for the first time maybe they're treating you equally and so this is something where it's very important to seek for God's view on a matter because if you're seeking for what God feels and how God thinks about it then you'll find 
probably the majority of the time that both of you will be wrong <laughs> from God's perspective and you both have something to deal with and work from. And it also just cuts out all of those fights of like, no, I'm right, no, no, I'm right, no, I'm right, no, I'm right. And all of that is just causes more pain and disconnect in a relationship. And it's not the basis for a loving, connected, close relationship. And in this presentation and in this unit, it's about having close, loving, connected relationships with your partner and ultimately your soulmate. So I mentioned soulmates and um, we've talked in a previous presentation about the human soul. So we talked about the human soul being um, the real you, having your passions, desires, nature, personality, all of, stores and holds all of your emotions, your feelings, your experiences, everything that's happened to you. I represented that via a circle and we spoke about how you have both spirit body and a physical body and that there is uh, two expressions of that soul in the physical and the, and the spirit bodies. And that can be two, two male bodies, two female bodies, and two, or a male and a female. So we talked about the soul and the spirit bodies and the physical bodies. And the bodies are just so you can interface with the world. So we've established that the soul is the real you. Now I've put this half in here because when we first come into the world, there's a lot of shutdown towards our soulmate. And so there's sort of like a, a barrier, if you like, between you feeling your entire soul all the time. And sometimes we're not even aware of it. I mean, the world reflects that all the time with how many partners different people have and how we just sleep around and how we think that, you know, we can just have anybody and we can choose. Well, just FYI <laughs> for your information, uh, actually God's already made the perfect playmate and partner for you and it's an expression of your soul. And we are shutting down so heavily that part of ourselves and our own nature and our own personality that we often are not even recognizing our soulmate. And there is an opportunity to actually work through issues and regardless of what relationship you're in right now, if this is the first time you've heard about soulmates, what you can begin to do in your partner relationship immediately is to start to treat it like a soulmate relationship. That means that you work through anything that prevents you from expressing and being yourself and, and, and actually letting your personality shine and your nature and developing those things. So often there's two different parts of a person. There's their nature and personality and there's their character. So character is by the choices you make and what you do that you can change. So whatever your character is right now, you can change that. Your nature and personality is fundamentally you. You cannot change it. It can um, uh, flourish and it can expand and it can uh, be expressed more and more and more, or you can shut it down. Uh, but fundamentally, it is you. It is how you, it is you. So you can't change that. And sadly, alone, as children, a lot of us are actually suppressed. Our nature and personality is suppressed. We often, our character is immoral and out of harmony with love and quite evil, often our character. But we can change our character and we can make choices. And this unit is about making choices for love-based change and, and to become a more loving parent. So with your interpersonal relationship, if you're treating it like a soul-based um, soulmate relationship, you would be seeking for God's truth all the time. You'd be longing to God to know about your own nature and personality and you'd be expressing your own nature and personality uh, while simultaneously working through any issue in you that was out of harmony with love or that prevented you from having a heartfelt longing and openness to the whole of your soul. And you can work through a lot of things with in a partner relationship, even if they're not your soulmate because you can't know who your soulmate is until you actually are being and living and actually growing and uh, expressing yourself with your entire whole heart and with like what I sort of say, with, without apology, that you are yourself under every circumstance after end of every situation. Very few people are like that in this world. Um, it, and when you do meet someone who even just has a, a small part of expression of their real nature and personality, they're just so lovely to be with. So in a family, as a partner relationship, uh, that is something that you'll need to resolve is are you soulmates? And that is an ongoing process. But as I said, you can just work, keep working through and the more you love and the more truth you receive from God, there'll be a natural progression that you'll come to understand and find out, well, yes, this is either the 
other expression of my like the other expression of my soul um, and we are the same soul or you'll come to find that we're not and if you genuinely both parties love in that interaction and both parties work through their issues and you can work through all of those you know sexual as I said sexual emotional spiritual physical issues um, and addictions and everything so that you can come to be a loving person and you can do that in whatever relationship you're in if both parties both desire the other party to grow they both desire to love the other party they both desire um, God's truth on all matters they both desire to understand like what's really happening they're both humble then there's so much beautiful opportunity to to grow and to develop and to discover a lot of uh, beautiful things via your relationship if on the other hand there's one party who doesn't want to change wants their addictions and you choose that you do want to grow that's going to cause some conflict at some point in your relationship and you'll need to make decisions of what the most loving thing to do in that situation is if you're already in a relationship that is actually quite toxic relationship or an abusive relationship and you've just not been wanting to make decisions then that's something to and um, take some actions that actually would bring more love in into your life that's something you need to look at as well of why you haven't wanted to make decisions and why you don't want to be humbled or feeling what's really happening in the relationship there's a lot of different reasons we stay in relationships or, and there's a lot of different reasons why we leave relationships because sometimes someone might actually really really love you and your fear of and terror of actually being loved and letting love in because of the fears that you have about that in the sense of sometimes we have a terror of feeling the grief about not being loved in the past and a whole lot of other reasons it wouldn't just be one thing probably if you don't deal with those things then you're going to want to leave a relationship and so this is where you need to reflect on your own unique situation about what's happening in your life now in relation to family dynamics the partner relationship is the first example or model of a relationship to children so when children come into the world whatever's happening in the partner relationship is going to affect the, the kids in your care and so if there's an, a lack of equality in the relationship, the children are going to learn that that's normal because that's all they're going to ever be exposed to. If there is um, demands and expectations from one party to another and, let, and let's say it's between a woman and a man, the, the partner relationship, then any girl children are going to probably model what their mum does or try and rebel against their mum. They're going to replicate what mum does or they're going to rebel and if there's boy children then they're going to probably either replicate or rebel against what dad's doing and so these are things to be aware of that you are impacting and influencing the children in your care the human soul which we have referred to is a hugely powerful force we often don't even think about what's happening with our soul and how much power that soul has and how much influence that soul has on our environment and with children the adult souls they're just a bit more so well sometimes they don't seem that much self-aware but you have had more awareness and more experiences in your life um, compared to a baby who's just literally entered the world and so that is um, that the baby is going to absorb everything that you believe and think and feel and this is where truth is so important because if you're lying to yourself and you're trying to have a facade or a fake way of interacting with the world you know the child's going to actually pick up on the real way and this is what I found when we first had children is like so the, the illusion of my life and what I wanted to hold on to it just like what was happening with the kids was just so uh, felt so out of control and like I was just like well what's even happening like I don't understand and it wasn't until I started to be honest and truthful with what my true feelings were that I could actually say oh wow the kids are actually responding to everything that's happening in me and their dad at the time and so it was a matter of like recognizing that wow my soul is really powerful and young children are just responding to what's going sometimes they're reflecting specifically and identically to what's happening for you often though it's just a response and it exposes emotions in the parents be it living in a family is a wonderful opportunity to learn about love and you don't have to be a parent to do that you can go and hang out with a family and learn a lot about yourself and love in that situation as well and there are so many children on the earth you don't have to be a biological you know child there's many many children who who would benefit from love and a loving environment and if you had a desire to to love them I'm sure they would benefit 
and we, and both parties could learn a lot about love. Again, depends on whose view of love it is and if it's yours, it's probably distorted and you have a lot of flawed definitions about it. But if it's based and you're aiming to find God's um, definition of love, well, then a lot of different, then there can be a lot of different possibilities. The family dynamic is influenced by the parents and the, the, the relationship that the parents have or that they don't have with each other. If you grow up in, a, in an environment where mum and dad are really disconnected from each other, they hardly live near each other, you learn basically that that's really what relationships are, that they're not close, they're not connected, they don't speak to each other. If your mum and dad don't discuss issues or everything's done in private, then you learn, oh, everything should be in private. Depending on your nature and personality and depending on your choices, you may either replicate that or rebel with that with your own children. I grew up in a family where we didn't really discuss anything important and what the feelings of people were often in complete opposition to what they said, which is a very confusing family to grow up in. And there was a lot of gaslighting. So when you felt something and you actually expressed or exposed it, you were shut down and told that what you were saying was completely untrue and what were you really talking about. So there was a lot of damaging beliefs and things that happened in the family. There was a lot of anger as well between the genders, um, both between my dad towards my mum and my mum towards my dad. And a lot of uh, things that were said like, well, we love you at the same time as they were doing abusive things, um, whether that was literally physical violence or sexual violence or um, emotional violence or they might be um, withholding love and saying that, that, was, that they cared about you. There were so many ways that were unloving and this is the beauty of reflecting on your family dynamic and looking at what your childhood was like because you learn a lot about what do I believe about relationships and what did mum and dad model to me and were they really loving, were they affectionate with each other, were they dismissive of each other and, th and then you can look at well how do I treat my partner now, am I replicating the dynamic between my parents or am I in rebellion against that or am I trying to do something physically different but I feel the same way sometimes as my parents. I've had quite a number of friends that have get to you know, their 40s and go, gosh, I just feel like I've turned into my mum or, oh, wow, I can just see how, like I'm doing things like my dad or they have kids and they're like, wow, I'm doing exactly what my parents did. And we kind of feel a bit like, well, how did we get here? Well, what happened? Well, you, if you don't re-educate yourself and you don't have a different possibility and you don't do something different, you're going to end up in the same position because that, like, that's what you've always known. And under pressure, we revert back to what's familiar. We revert back to what's comfortable for us. And that's why making a soul-based emotional shift is so important because then you will revert to what is loving if you've received God's truth about what is loving because you can um, remove, say, a belief and then not have that belief anymore, but you may not have replaced it with, say, God's truth on a matter. And if you don't have God's truth, then you know, it's, I suppose it's like a neutral territory. You may not act on the old belief anymore, but you won't necessarily act in harmony with, with truth and God's love. So that's where your love of God and the relationship with God becomes so important is that's how you're going to know what is loving and truthful from God's perspective. So I've talked a bit about how you replicate relationships or you might rebel against them and try different things and how children respond to the environment and particularly the partner relationship because of soul-based dynamic. And this can happen whether you're in a relationship or not. So if you're a single parent, then you're, the child is still going to respond to your soul and they will also have absorbed certain um, emotional injuries from um, the parent who might not, like say, who, who left. And depending on what age the parent left and you became a single parent will depend on how much they absorbed and how much influence they had. Now, if there's a new partner that comes in and you end up beginning a new relationship, uh, there will also be certain things that a child will reflect with a partner as well, and that will be different. So if, you've, if, if, if the biological parents are kind of different to then they might have a, another significant adult in their lives as they grow, there'll be a whole combination of things going on there. Regardless if you're actually with a partner in a relationship or you're a single parent, there is, if you do not deal with your childhood emotional injuries, then a child will reflect those. And if you do not deal with your issues with your mum or your dad, 
Um, and when I say that, like emotionally work through how you how you felt. And as children, we often feel very unloved. We often feel like ridiculed. We often feel scared and terrified about a whole lot of things due to what happened to us um, as children. So we may have been in, in, in certain situations and our parents withdrew love due to being fearful or angry. So we're terrified of that feeling. So we, then we might get into a partner relationship and not ever want our partner to be angry because then we feel very unloved. And if we don't say deal with that issue emotionally and work through our terror of feeling unloved, then we are going to want to substitute with with um, children. And if we're not getting the feelings from our partner, we're completely gonna, going to substitute with children. And this is a very damaging thing that we um, parents do with children. I see it happening all the time um, in families. And families often now actually think that it's normal or good and they start actually using the child as a substitute for anything that they're not getting from their partner. And this is not good. So, for instance, if you have a love-based relationship with your partner and you are um, sexually fulfilled with each other and you're emotionally fulfilled with each other and you're working through all of your emotions and you're working in a relationship with God and you really want to love or investigate love, so you're working towards becoming a more loving parent, and you're working your physical addictions and taking a moral stand saying, I'm not going to deal with, I'm not going to, I'm not going to partake in that addiction anymore. Well, now you've got far less damaging, unloving influence on the children because you are taking self-responsibility for your own feelings and your own emotions. And as you work through those, that will leave a child free to actually work through their issues and feel their emotions as well particularly if they're a very, very small child. When there's a child is very small, if you actually work through a causal emotion, it's highly likely your child will just have an emotional response, work through a whole lot of feelings without thinking. If they're very small, they'll just probably cry and feel and they'll release it and then they, will, it, they actually won't be influenced by that anymore. But if you store that emotion and you do not release those feelings and you choose to act in all your addictions all the time and you're in an addictive relationship with your partner where you want things from your partner and you barter with your partner and you're not sexually fulfilled and you feel unloved by your partner, um, your partner also believe you may not wholeheartedly love them, now your children are going to respond to that. And if you're feeling, say, neglected by your partner, say one, one, of, one of you is out working all the time and is really busy and you only see each other like for, you know, for a moment every night and the other party is at home looking after the kids, unless you emotionally work through your loneliness and feeling unloved and feeling that someone doesn't want to spend time with you and whatever other emotions are exposed by that attraction, you are going to use your kids to fill in that. that. Now, let's say that it's the... Um, the mum who's out working and it's a dad who's looking after the children and one of those children is a girl, he's highly likely to substitute the girl child for what he's not getting from his partner. So she will become, you know, special to him and he'll want to spend more time with her and she'll want, and she will respond by, you know, because children want to be loved and they like attention and if they're not being loved in a real way like from God's perspective they'll seek out approval or other means to to avoid feeling unloved themselves so if a man say hasn't dealt with his um, um, issues with his mum and where his mum had to validate him and that's how he felt like he was a good man and then he's in this partner relationship with a woman who's busy all the time and she's not validating him all the time he is going to substitute his daughter to get those feelings and going to give her a role to basically look after him and make him feel good. And that is not a good thing to do with a child. This could also go to, um, you know, if they're sexually not getting fulfilled, it could be emotionally incestuous or, or even sexual abuse to in an extreme form. And when I say emotional incestuous, I mean that he's basically using his daughter as a substitute for his wife because he's not being fulfilled by his partner in the ways that he feels he should be, should be fulfilled. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that the ways what he wants from his partner might not even be loving either. He needs to, you'd need to assess that against what, how God feels. You'd, ne you'd need to assess that against how God feels. 
We can take another situation. Say there's um, a mum and she hasn't dealt with her issues with her dad and she feels very unloved by her dad. She might have been treated as inferior by her dad and taught that men are better than women and she's been hurt by men What she and she hasn't felt through her hurt so she's still got anger at men. When she has a son, she may substitute and try and create him to be the perfect man. And when I say perfect man, I don't mean perfect and in love, which would be a wonderful aspiration <laughs> to have, though you can't make someone uh, do that. More the, to be perfect in her eyes, to give her what she thinks that she she's missing out on or what she wants. And the tragedy of doing that to a child is that you teach them a lot of unloving things. And you also, if you, then in your partner relationship, you're going to set up a competition with your child and your partner. And your partner's not going to feel loved if you are using your um, child as a substitute. And so then that's going to cause friction. And often then what happens is instead of the adults dealing with those issues and working through them and correcting them, they then actually start to create terrible dynamics between the children. And, and themselves. And so competition is set up. So sometimes with mothers and daughters, there's a lot of competition. When a father favors a daughter over his wife, there's often a lot of competition between men and their sons because the mother favors the son. This is a terrible thing for the child as well as the adult. And it sets up a lack of equality in the family, which is damaging to everybody involved. It causes a lot of pain and suffering. It causes a relationship breakdowns. And I find that people aren't really honest about what's really happening in their family dynamic. A lot of people think this is normal and fine. I've even seen like documentaries where the dads pretty much are acting like their daughter's husbands and everyone thinks that's okay. When I say that, sometimes you can even see in those documentaries the mothers don't actually feel it's okay and are quite jealous of their daughters, but no one's talking about that. And that's where the problem comes in because no one's changing it. And so then all of these like animosity uh, comes in and people are resentful and they treat each other badly and then they start blaming everyone else and there's no humility so no one's really feeling how they really feel no one's being honest and truthful about how they really feel and so things just repeat and stay the same so you can see that if you do not deal with the pain from your past and the issues and dynamics in your family and you're not truthful and have god's opinion on those how then you're going to attract a partner who is going to expose those things. How often do you observe in society where people literally are marrying their dad or marrying their mum? And obviously it's not literally their mum or dad, but the feelings and the dynamics and the emotional um, interactions between the parties are exactly the same as the environment you grew up in. And that's pretty much what we do because we don't deal with the emotional issues in ourselves that happened in our childhoods. So we then meet a partner, which is the perfect opportunity to expose those issues and another opportunity to work through those issues. Instead of working through those issues, then as parents, we have children and we then substitute the child. And then we create another generation of the same thing. This is why making love-based change is so important in your life is if you, you as a parent have the opportunity to stop the cycle, you have the opportunity to actually create a generate, like to have a generation, the next generation to be completely different than you are. The beauty of actually doing this is that as parents, if you choose to, to actually find God's truth on a matter and actually live by God's truth rather than what you think is right or they think is right or the world thinks is right, then you have the opportunity for the first time ever to actually have children who have the least amount of issues possible, who understand God's laws, who understand there's a possibility to get truth from God so that they can have a better life. And if you can heal and remove any of the issues that are in, inside of you, so they do not affect the child, they have the you know uh, they don't impact the children. And if the children are t like just the one belief about humility if people change that and and felt like no i can cope with emotion emotion is good we need to feel it let's express it let's um, experience it let's go through that everyone's capable of doing that on any emotion no drugs no like no addictions nothing and everyone agreed you know and everyone that'd be an emotional process you'd have to go through it but let's just look at the idea like the idea of it let's just do a thought experiment with it if you did that and everyone was accepting of it and everyone was feeling, 
that would change the world in just a heartbeat. Just like it would change the world overnight if everyone made that moral choice. So I'm going to feel my emotion every single time. I'm not going to blame somebody. I'm going to feel my anger in a self-responsible manner, meaning I'll take myself off to my room or in the privacy of, of an area or go outside and just rage rather than actually act in my rage. Or I'm going to feel my fear and I'm going to completely every single time I'm going to stop and I'm going to feel the terror that I have and that comes up and I'm going to feel it until it's done. And I'm not going to make a decision. I'm not going to act in it. That would change the world overnight if we just made that moral decision. Another moral decision I'm going to love under every circumstance. If you're going to love, that would mean that you would be, you know, you'd tell the truth under every single circumstance. You'd be humble under every single circumstance. You would not substitute your children. You would see everybody as your brothers and sisters. So we'd no longer have these um, lack of equality in families because everyone would be equal. All of those ideals are going to take emotional change in a person, but they are possible. And you can start in your family to do them. And the place to start is in your interpersonal dynamics. If you sort your relationship out with your partner, then it is much easier for the children in your care to actually work through through issues because you are the souls. Often what I see happening in the world, and I think it's very skewed, is that parents are trying to change and correct and modify children, and they're not de- and that's just effects. They're not dealing with the cause which is in them, and they need to make personal change. And that is going to be the key to you actually growing and developing and becoming a more loving individual is to make personal soul-based change. So all of this, these um, sessions are about, about different skills and qualities that you can develop in order to make soul-based personal change. In every video, you can actually apply immediately what we've been talking about and start investigating in your life in order that you can take a snapshot then you can self-reflect about it and then you can investigate causes and make it you know see the difference between what are effects and what are causes and then you can actually decide well you're going to go just by doing this god's way which is a rapid way or you're going to do it the natural love way where it's just going to be like through ethics and trial and error to figure out well what is love what isn't loving And that can cause a lot of pain and suffering and it's not as fast. So obviously children grow up pretty fast. And so if you're going to do it the natural love way, um, it's highly likely your children won't benefit as greatly as if you do it God's way. Um, and And I mean sincerely here. If you don't do this sincerely, then there will no change will happen. As we talked about, if you're not sincere about change and you don't put into actual practical application and practice what I'm presenting, there will be no change in your life and in your relationships or in your home or in your family dynamics. And that's a beautiful feedback system. If there's no change, you know you haven't done it yet. Um, So very clear. That's what's lovely about God. It's like when you have a prayer to God, it's so clear. If you get no answer, there's a problem in you that you need to, to work through. There's some block to receiving the information because God answers every sincere prayer. God is trying to give you information in so many different ways. And we talked about the feedback systems um, in an earlier session. And so it's not that there's a lack of information. It's just that how sensitive and open are you to receiving that information? And these interpersonal relationships or your partner relationship completely affect your family dynamic. And I cannot stress enough, deal with your partner relationship and a lot of issues with the kids will automatically um, be corrected, particularly if the children are very young. Um, I've had experiences where as soon as I've made a heartfelt shift and I can't, I, it's that I've been through emotions, but I've also made this firm decision and it feels different than me just going, oh yes, I'm going to, I've got to like talk to the kids about, you know, cleaning up. And then it's like you just keep talking and you keep saying the same thing and it's like on repeat and eventually you get really angry and then you get resentful and then you start punishing the kids and then you start getting upset at them and then you start blaming them and you go, well, if you just cleaned up, then I wouldn't be all upset and angry. (laughs) You don't have to be all upset and angry if you look at the cause and you can go, wow, there's some issues of love in our home. What are those? How am I contributing to those? How am I creating those? What have I taught these kids? They're not loving themselves or others. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, let's talk about that. And that's so in our home now, we talk about the cause or we investigate the cause. And it's like, you know, if you're not cleaning up, why not? And then I take a loving action. And that causes a lot of anger to dissipate and not even be be a problem. 
because every time that you act in harmony with love, you know you've done the loving thing, there's always a loving action, and then there's just, you know that the other person just then has a choice, and they can choose to either love or not love, and if they choose to love, lovely, you can move on and, and lots of good things happen. If they choose not to love, all you've got to do is take another loving action. If they choose not to love, then, you know, the same thing kind of happens, and this is the same in relationships. Having spoken about some of the unloving things in, in relationships, the question becomes, well, how do you have a loving relationship? And what is a, a loving relationship and how does that look? Again, I suggest uh, the experiment of feeling God's feelings about that. So having a, a longing to God, having a prayer to God about and a desire to know how God feels about relationships. And you can also ask, well, what does a loving relationship look like? That's an experiment you can try right now about receiving God's feelings on a relationship. If you get no information, you know there's a block in you about what's going on and that something in you is preventing you receiving that information. So then you can just, that's your point to start at. Okay, well, how do you really feel about this? Do you, like, what, where's your relationship at God, God at? Why can't you receive that information? Um, in the meantime, you can then like start looking at, well, what is, it, um, you know, what brings us joy in our relationship and what doesn't? And is what's happening like in our in our home, is it equal? You can start with ethics, you know. Would I like this done to me? Would I not? For a relationship to blossom and develop, I feel like there's some key qualities to develop. And there's also some reflection questions that you can ask and reflect upon in order to assess where your relationship is at and that you can just go back to time and time again in order to assess any situation in your relationship. So some of those key qualities to develop are do you want to love? So love, do, do I want to love in a relationship? Two is truth. Are you truthful in every situation with your partner? Like I suppose what most people would say would be brutally honest because I'm uh, finding like a lot of people are very adverse to personal truth, which I find kind of sad in a way because it's via truth that we can grow and it's via truth actually that you feel more connected to a person and your relationships are better. But often truth also exposes a lot of emotion. And so I don't feel it's the truth itself that people, I feel like people associate truth as this sort of bad thing that causes them pain. But actually they already had pain and the truth just exposed that pain in them. And instead of being humble and just feeling the pain and working through it, and then you'd come to, I, I feel, you'd come to love the truth because you'd be like, oh, great, all I need is some truth. And then my emotions are exposed and then I've got the opportunity to feel them. But that's not how most people feel, unfortunately, but that, that's not how most people feel. So some of, there's some reflection questions that I often look at in relationships and they are to do with love. Um, the first one is, what would my love of my partner have me do for my partner? So what would my love, if I loved them, and my expression of love, what would my love do, have me do for my partner? Second question, what would my love, so again, my love, have me do for me? So how would I love me? Like what would I do if I was loving? So first one, how would I love my partner? How would I love me? The third one is, what would my partner's love for them do for them? So what would my partner's love of themselves have them do for them? What would my partner's love of me have them do for me? Now, can you see that only one of those is about someone else loving you? The other three is about, um, or two are about you, actually your love for another person, and one is about what the other person's love for themselves would do. And what I notice in relationships is mostly it's about fighting or power struggle for what we can get from the other party. And it's like, well, if you don't love me, I'm not going to love you. And if you don't care about me, I'm not going to care about you. Well, that's not what love does. Love is a gift. Love is something that comes from a feeling and it is a, it feels really good to love a person. And we miss out on the joy of loving people because often we're so absorbed in getting something for ourselves. And that's never going to turn out well because we're already out of harmony with love. Now, another thing is, is that let's take it like what would my love of my partner do for them? Well, that would mean that I would love them because I have a desire to. I'd be truthful with them. I'd be humble to my own emotions because I'd want to feel through everything that prevented me from being close to my partner. And I would deal with everything in the privacy of my own home, not like in privacy of my own bedroom or in a private space that doesn't involve my partner. 
I wouldn't want to be a burden on my partner. I wouldn't have expectations and demands. I definitely wouldn't exploit their emotional injuries or make them feel guilty in order to do something. I would be always looking for how can I love them? What can I do to love them? Feeling through my issues is loving myself and another person. So that meets two questions. Being myself and expressing my nature and personality, that's loving to me and to the world. That's a gift as well to the world. Me developing my passions and desires and living within them, well, that's going to create and generate a whole lot of good things in the sense of I'm going to be happier, which is so much nicer to be around if you're in a partner relationship. You're going to be fulfilled and you're going to be excited about like working towards it. If that's your soulmate, you're going to be working towards a common goal and that would be lovely. Now, if you're not soulmates, that will also help you by developing your passions and desires. You'll also say, wow, we really don't have things in common. We're not, we're not actually the same soul because I love this and you love that and I love this most. Now, when you begin, you could meet your soulmate and think like you're completely different it's in the sense that you've just been injured and brought up in a different way and some things are allowed and some things aren't and so you may be very shut down to your nature and personality so you can't just tell by physical things and the same likes because sometimes that can be an addiction and sometimes that can be um, a soul-based love of something and that's something that needs to be developed and worked through to be found out. But this is the beauty of being in a partner relationship is that you can experiment and you can find out things and you can try things together and you can investigate and you can explore. Um, and if you have that attitude shift or that shift in yourself that, wow, there's a lot of possibilities. And if you're aiming for God's truth and God's way and you're both working towards that and you both have a desire for both, uh, uh, like each other to grow and to love each other and to be truthful with each other, and for the other person to be the full expression of their own soul. I can't see how a relationship would be would go wrong now. I feel like you'd get a lot of joy and a lot of happiness. It doesn't mean that you wouldn't have times where you feel sad or upset or um, you know, angry or terrified. All those are feelings that need to come out of you. But if your desire is to love the other person, you're not going to take all of that personally. You're just going to say, well, that's they need to go through that. You'd and I remember this is based on where you can get like a possibility that, you know, if you're really humble, then you know you're going to be able to cope with your emotions. So you're not going to be shutting the other party down from their emotions because you'll be like, no, you need to feel those. I know that's good for you. And so these are some of the beliefs that need to change in partner relationships. Um, and also, you know, we often get very self-absorbed in our partner relationships and we feel like everything's about us. And a lot of the time it's not because most parties, both people are self-absorbed. And so they're so worried about themselves that no one else is really worrying about them. So we have a lot of worries and issues in ourselves that if we actually loved and were just humble, they'd dissipate and it would be a lot simpler in relationships. But I think relationships get so complicated often because we're not dealing with the issues we have. We're not being truthful with each other. And whenever there's truth, like a lack of truth, it causes a lot of pain and suffering in relationships. Um, even when there's things that are might you might find hard or you know if someone's cheating on you if your partner's so if, if your partner's cheating on you you might have a lot of feelings to feel about that but in my book it's far better to know because then you can make some informed choices about what you want to do about that or if you find out like your partner really doesn't love you well that's good information for both parties one's going to feel really unloved and to be honest you would have already been feeling that even if someone hasn't verbally said it. Um, but being honest about it uh, causes you to then be able to make some decisions or to grieve that process and decide whether you want to stay in the relationship. And also by often admitting these things, you can actually begin to grow a love for another person because if you don't admit it, you're never going to explore and go deeply into, well, why? Why don't I love? Why am I in this relationship? Begin with like barter, meaning I'll give you this if you give me that. I'll trade this for, for that. And at the beginning, you're happy to trade. But over time, different things happen and you might feel like, I don't want to trade that anymore. Well, now what's going to happen to your relationship? If that's all it was based on, where do you go from there? There's, there's not much left. And so you are going to find that you're going to go, well, I don't really feel like I want to be here anymore. And often that's what happens is you deal with one addiction and you no longer want to be in the relationship. 
I suggest though to examine if that does happen, why you went into that relationship in the first place because it wasn't about love. And that's something that I think is important to be honest with yourself about and to explore of, well, why am I in a relationship and what am I doing here? And how is that affecting the other person? And I think it's important to examine and reflect upon, well, why did I go into this relationship and what was my motivations and intentions? And if it wasn't to love, then why was it? And once you break all of those things down in yourself and you actually come to accept um, and you actually come to feel the truth that you have a soulmate and you, it will bring up a lot of feelings from your past. If you've had a lot of multiple partners, there's going to be some pain to feel about that because God has created you to be with your soulmate. That's one other person. And so these are things to resolve in your relationships. And as I said, if you're in a relationship, you can begin to resolve those immediately. If both parties want to grow, want to become more loving, want to be more truthful, you've got a really lovely opportunity to grow and change. Even if one party just wants to, it's still a lovely opportunity. And it will just naturally, if, if one wants to change and one doesn't, it will come to a head at some point and there'll be some decisions you'll need to make on whether you stay in that um, relationship or you don't. And um, I suggest, though, if you stay, you'd be looking at your addictions if the other party definitely doesn't, doesn't want to do any changing because God's made us all to change. And if we're not growing and changing, then we're in disharmony with God's laws. So a partner relationship has a very big impact on family dynamics. In fact, the whole environment and the atmosphere and everything in the family is dictated by that partner relationship. And as obviously children grow and they become teenagers and then they become adults, then sometimes the dynamics can shift, but you still are going to have had a huge influence, particularly on young children. And you are the main, like you, the attractions that happen to the children, um, the, what the children respond to, what they reflect in the partner, you know, relationship, and they will play out things in their dynamic. So any sexual injuries that are going on between you and your partner, that will be played out with. If you've got more than one child, they'll play that out or with other kids. Um, if you've got emotional issues, they will play out between each other or with other kids and with other adults at times and, and with other adults or other people. Then if you've got like, like love-based issues and spiritual-based issues, they're going to play out. If you've got physical issues, they're going to play out. So if you remember our cause and effect talk, just always go back to okay everything that's just happening that are, you know is in our family is an effect what is the cause deal with the cause you can make really positive change and remember no change happens unless you make a soul-based emotional change so in this presentation we've covered um, partner relationships how they affect the family dynamic we've looked at how your partner relationship is a model of first relationships for children We've touched on soulmates and how um, children respond to the family dynamic and what's happening in the family. We've looked at substitution in relationships and done some self-reflection on what is your relationship like right now? What has attracted you to this person in your relationship? Do you want to love? And also looked at the four questions on um, about do you want to love? and what kind of relationship do you want? And it's worth sitting down and doing the self-reflection. Um, and we did a diagram right at the first presentation about how we're looking at where we are right now and where we want to go and how it's like measuring where we're at right now. And then if we bring our life into harmony with God's way, the positive benefits of doing that, it can lead to loving relationships. It can lead to loving um, dynamics with children. It can lead to, you know, loving business relationships. You can become a loving individual by applying the principles of God's way or God's truth to your life. And so this with your relationships is just revisiting all of those things that we have looked at previously of taking a snapshot. So in this instance, you're taking a snapshot of your relationship. What is it happening right now? self-reflecting on it. How do you feel about it, your relationship right now? What's going on? What's making you happy? What's making you unhappy? Where are the problems? Is the unhappiness just due to not getting your addictions met? Is the unhappiness due because there's genuinely an issue of love in your relationship that needs to be resolved or rectified? Is it because you're not speaking up in your relationship and so you're not being truthful? There's so many areas and things that are happening that you can reflect upon. Remember, self-reflection is emotional, so feel how you feel about it then you can start looking at all the effects. 
and starting to reflect on those. Wow, there's this happening, this happening, this happening, this happening. How do I feel about that? What's causing that? What in me is contributing to this? What am I either not doing, like sort of um, emitting and sort of going, oh no, that's not a big deal, I'm not going to deal with that. Or what are you actively doing to create all of these effects? And so you can look at, at those areas of your life. And then there's the um, looking at it from God's perspective. So if you're going to do it God's way, seek God's truth. What is God's truth on these matters? How does God feel about this? And you can ask that every moment of every day about every single situation and you can get answers. Remember, if you're not getting answers, there's a block in you. The more you're emotionally released from what's stored in your soul, then the more you're going to be open to receiving information from God, if you have a desire to, because if you don't want to hear from God, you're not going to. <laughs> God never forces God's opinion on you. God's laws are there to help guide you and to teach you things, but God wants personal relationship with you. And if you want to love God, God would love to receive your love and to have that, that um, privilege and also for to give you love if you have a desire to receive it. And that's the beauty of a relationship with God is that God wants to give and to receive. And in a partner relationship that is based on love, you're going to want to give and you're going to want to receive love. And so that is the beauty of working towards a partner relationship. We also spoke about just how parents, like the provision God has made to be a parent on earth and some of the dynamics that happen in parents, um, in families and how the world's very out of harmony with love and out of harmony with the way God parents and how that's damaging to children and also to parents if we continue to, to continue down the world's way. We can already see that families are a mess. There's a lot of trauma. There's a lot of pain and suffering. Um, most adults are kind of like little kids because we've got so much emotion that's stored in us that we haven't released and we're not even growing up, you know, properly because we are underdeveloped in, in pretty much all areas of our life, spiritually, emotionally, sexually, and physically. And then this presentation was about partner relationships. And you can see if you're not, if you haven't kind of worked out all the, the issues that are within yourself, you enter a partner relationship, well, of course, things are going to be a bit tricky and rocky and dicey and not go so well if you haven't really grown up and you haven't felt all your emotions and you're wanting things from other people. Well, you can't just have a love-based relationship where you want to get to know the other person because you're going to be invested in what you either want to avoid emotionally or what you want to get emotionally. And that's something that you can personally reflect upon. So this is the fifth session in this unit. Brings me to the end of the skills and qualities to develop, the relationships to develop, the tools you have to work with and practical experiments that you can um, apply. The next presentation is going to be a series of presentations all about practical examples and applying all of these things I have discussed in the first five videos to practical examples, either from my own life or if you would like to send in, uh, you can send in video clips or questions uh, or we could have a conversation that we could tape and then I could um, record and put on a video and we can talk about actual real life examples applied to the family dynamics. And then we can talk about applying principles of divine truth to those dynamics and also applying the skills and principles and qualities that we've talked about and how to develop them in actual situations. What I find is there's a lot of things happening in families that are very similar across many families. Again, as I said, if you can understand principles, and a principle can only be understood if you actually have it in your soul, but if you can understand a principle, you can apply it to any situation. And that's the beauty of God's truth. And it's the, the, the thing I love most about God's truth is it's very simple and it's very simple to understand. It doesn't always feel easy, but it is simple. And in the sense that you can experiment and you can get results very, very quickly if you apply it sincerely. And that is the key, the application of it. So there's many people who listen to divine truth. And I would say that if your life has not significantly changed, then you have not applied these basic things that are presented in these last five videos. And if you did apply them, your life would, would change. I know that from personal experience, my, my life has substantially changed, my relationships with the children have changed, my relationships with other people have changed, my relationships with my partner have changed. Um, I am all for divine truth. I think it's fantastic. Again, until you practically apply it, until you uh, experiment for yourself, 
you're going to feel however you feel about it right now. I know this works. I know the practical application brings good positive results to your life and I know that it can help you to become a loving person. Um, it's up to you whether you apply it and you have a go. Go with your self-reflection and I'll see you in the next presentation.